afternoon, everybody. And today I'm going to bring you through a journey which encompasses, I suppose, some uh, demographics um, and some aging workforce, and I suppose the integration of both in relation to what digital approaches we're going to take. So I suppose this was an interest to me because there's many outlines in relation what are the big mega trends coming forward uh, in the next number of years. And this is actually happening as the economies of the world are actually very, very good. Everything is going very, very well. But in my view, that uh, there is, I suppose, an oncoming threat that hasn't really been factored in or taken into account. And it was interesting hearing uh, David's speech earlier on in relation to demographics and five generations within um, work and place. And I suppose part of my presentation will address some of this. Um, we're living in a completely evolving world where everything from remote monitoring, real-time communication, robotics, virtual care service, remote working is starting to come. Um, and this again probably uh, feeds to some of the sense of earlier on today that is HR dying or is HR dead when you look, I suppose, what the future workforce is going to be. Um, and again, part of that process as well as, I suppose, the looming crisis, what we're facing. I'd like to do a little survey if you can. I can't see, oh, I can see you there now. I'd like to do a little survey if you could, if you just humor me on this, and all you need to do is stick up your hand. So, who here is less than 20 years of age? Okay. Who here is between 20 and 30? Ooh, very good. Between 30 and 40? Ooh. Between 40 and 50? Ooh. Right, 50 to 60, S oh, between 60 and 70, well done, 70 to 80, 80 to 90, 90 to 100. And this, to a certain degree, is going to be the evolving workforce. I guarantee you, if I'm around in 20 years' time and I come back on this, the majority of the age profile is going to raise up. The current landscape, to a certain degree, I describe it as an iceberg. Traditionally, um, the flat base would be the general demogra uh, demographic population growth and up to a narrow spine in the future, and then to a very, very um, peak at the top where there's less aging. That's all changing. In my own belief, there's not enough focus, I suppose, put on the emerging demographics and, what and how that impacts on um, industries, I suppose, throughout the world. Um, I wish to say that was me as a young child, but it wasn't. Um, but a report, I think four days ago by the Financial Times, um, offers an in insight into this, where according to a member of the Bank of England Monetary Policy, the UK would become literally zero growth workforce in two years' time. And that then is going to impact the rest of Europe in 2025. We are living in a society from today where the population is going to stop coming through. And we need to, in my view, we need to adopt, ad ad adjust and adapt to that. I'll give you a little slide. Uh, Netherlands probably has an average population. Uh, this is the population trend. And again, going back to the kind of iceberg or Christmas tree, this is traditionally what way it used to look like. And this is, a as you can see, from the 70s, large population growth. But continuously, every year and year, the average mean increases and increases and increases. And the base is narrowing and narrowing and narrowing. And what we actually have at the moment is a very, very rich vein of work workers. And again, I got a sense today between 30 and 50 in the workforce. And that's what the future is going to be like. And it's not just in relation to, I suppose, the Netherlands. Across Europe, it's, it's causing, I suppose, uh, capacity issues. And it's also causing wider societal issues. So it will have huge impact for all of us in relation to how we manage and how we work with our employees. 1958% of the world's population was over 60. In 2018, this has reached 13.3%. By 2050, 20% of the world's population will be over 60. So as we race towards this figure, it'll impact how many uh, human resources employees, manager managerial productivity and societal areas will be challenged. We'll be managing more and more senior employees. Uh, the ramifications of an aging workforce uh, and future corporate productivity are quite significant. Um, this will have to be factored in with any HR programs and must be considered in any formulation of the advent of future more developed and a digital workforce, because as we move forward, um, our workplaces are becoming more digitalized. So in my view, this is where HR needs to have an impact to counterbalance the new evolution in the employee landscape. And this is where new digital initiatives will be forthcoming in assisting and managing the enhanced new digital workplace. Organizations have a choice. 
They can embrace the change with older workers and use them, or they can ignore them. The difficulty is the talent pool isn't out there, as we know. It's getting more and more expensive to get the talent pool. And even in that, at the moment, there's also uh, challenges in relation. Organizations are now managing five generations of workers. So how will HR cope, cope with the reintegration uh, of elderly employees? So again, what I says in relation to cross-generation, where are we at? And I didn't, this is not my quote, and I want to say this. Um, anybody try to promote the collective merits and youth and age in the workplace bumps up against the problems of generational stereotypes. And to me, generational stereotypes is an unwritten, um, I think, bias, and it's an unwritten type of racism. Um, it's unfair to categorize any uh, group of people by their age classification. But the stereotypical media-driven content is uh, anybody over 40 is a helpless technophobe dinosaur, and anybody under 20, 30 is a baby boomers or pesky youngsters who may be black belt smartphone ninjas, but they're hard work to manage. So industries are currently struggling with skill shortage and an aging workforce, but a smoother move into digital transformation and technology culture can help ease the current resource shortfall and give a competitive edge by mixing skills and experience. Organizations must be more aware and proactive to train and upskill older workers and preparing them for the ever emerging and challenging digital economy. Um, the aging population is coming, it's a fact. Um, a kind of a straw poll today of the room, we're all kind of between 30 and 60, so there is an aging population coming. Aging employees are in the organizations that possibly have shown loyalty and possibly to a certain degree um, may have been overlooked in relation to the introduction of technology. Um, but the, the, the world is going to change and we need to address that. So my suggestions in relation how to help an aging workforce embrace digital transformation, and I'm not going to put a number in what aging is, because again, in the video earlier on, it was you know, from late 20s up to 50s. So to a certain degree, all um, employees um, need to be encompassed. First thing is embrace an aging workplace. You're going to be older in your own workplaces. Um, place it in the center of your diversity and inclusion program. It's something that astounds me in relation to a lot of organizations don't do this. Um, a lot of organizations are very positive and proactive in relation to, um, I suppose, attracting um, younger um, people into the workforce. Uh, but it, 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 is, um, it needs to be strongly included in diversity and inclusion programs. Um, create impactful training programs. Uh, training may have to be augmented to older employees who may have some exposure to today's platforms but need more time to feel comfortable enough to use them on a day-to-day -day basis. I did a conference last year and around digitalization, and a lot of, um, I would call it, younger people were saying, look, digital transformation affects us as well. The fact that we use an awful lot of digital equipment um, doesn't mean we're actually totally okay with it. It's just the way and the nature how we communicate. So even in organizations, when they are bringing in new platforms or new change, and um, they get frustrated with it as well. Uh, ways to help. Create a transformational culture that's linked to career progression. Define and demonstrate the benefits of emergent technology to current roles and indicate the advantage to any digital implementations to all users. Encourage company engagement through collaboration or communication platforms. It never ceased to me amaze me at these conferences, the amount of apps and engagement, communication that there are available to employees. Some of them are phenomenal and I would advise people if they haven't implemented them, they actually are very, very good. The use of internal communication platforms is helpful in relation to break down intergeneration silos and meld, um, meld employees of different ages. It keeps employees engaged with their companies. Encourage company engagement through collaboration. Encourage connection for all employees through their mobile devices to pervert anywhere, anytime access tools and corporate information. Immerse them in the company ethos and cultures. The internal company communication tools are becoming much more present, much more applicable. And to a certain degree, if it's regulated, even WhatsApp groups within company cultures is quite good if um, the, the resources aren't there to have more formative platforms. And again, create a company of lifelong learning. Um, learning doesn't need to be short, it doesn't need to be impactful. Um, organizations that actually have a continuous professional development part or actually have a situation where they actually encourage lifelong learning, um, again, through in-work and outside work, are generally more successful and make it fun and accessible and inclusive. Design and provide a wider range of training option, including a strong focus on a continuous learning for all employees. The employees you have, you may have for a lot more longer. Um, so it seems strange that you have a resource that possibly is loyal, probably is, is there, that hasn't been fully utilized yet. 
clearly communicate automation and future plan technology. And this was the point that came back in when I, I do a survey in pre previous conferences. People are frustrated by, uh, by technology change. Even if the new system is better than the old system, which is better than the previous system, people do get frustrated at that. But again, that's a sign of the times we have in relation to the ever emerging, I suppose, digital change and the amount of options that are there. Demystify future skills, particularly technology and digital skills. Better recognize the human skills, particularly customer service and how they complement digital skills. And again, that's a great example in relation to use the cross-generational experience. Um, having, I suppose, somebody who's got a lot more lifelong experience um, sitting in with people that don't have lifelong experience and maybe haven't got the same um, level of communication that somebody who is more senior does have. This will increase employee engagement. There's no doubt about it. Um, this will lower employee turnover because to a certain degree embracing all ages within this, uh, again through the digital platforms, gets people to stay more connected. And again, going back to David's um, part earlier on, if there is a stronger, I suppose, corp uh, identity to the cor uh, corporate value point and the employee value points, um, this actually d will reduce employee turnover. Um, it'll increase employee referrals. Um, in our own company at the moment, uh, we have an internal refer a friend program, and 10% of, of our recruitment at the moment is actually done through refer a friend. Um, people who are referred stay longer, they're usually a better quality employee, and to a certain degree, you're then creating, um, I suppose, a small ecosystem of friends working in the company. So it does actually help in relation to that, that people want to go for a company that they actually want, that their friends are working for. Um, again, if there's continuous and lifelong training, it gives a higher training skill scores. It also helps a company be more agile because if training is continuous and going on all the time, it means that um, it becomes part of the ethos, it becomes part of the DNA, and therefore it helps the continuous learning and development. It also helps you lower your skill gap shortages. Um, there may be people in your organization today that you don't believe have the necessary skills. Again, a comprehensive regular training needs analysis could identify that. Somebody who has an interest in a particular area um, may be able to offer and benefit um, solutions to problems that you never knew these people were able to do. Um, again, preferred place to work. In, a, in an age of where employees are very uh, fluid and want to move um, because it suits them, it may make your workplace actually a pr preferred place to work. It also gives greater employee loyalty because, again, you have employees who have been with you possibly for a long time. If you show investment in them and if you show a dedication to them, you are going to get that in return. HR must evolve also, um, before we die, that is. Um, position HR's role as a facilitator of both business and human success will therefore be, uh, be co-dependent on a strategic grasp of long-term technological, ethical and social change. My own criticism of HR is we're, we're great at doing the policies, procedures, we're great at doing the strategies, but by the time we've all that implemented, technology has moved on and people have moved on for it. Um, HR, human resources, is about the human, so it's important that we actually um, are able to embrace that and to bring that forward. And these changes are going to continue to emerge. It's not just a flash and plan. To a certain degree, you're all going to get older unless somebody finds the magic cure. Um, and they're also going to feed into the, the current macro socioeconomic trends are going to persist. So the choice is somewhat clear. HR must keep on topping of preparing for emergent demographic shockwaves or risk, risk losing touch with broad societal environment and emergent employees' landscapes. One of the reasons I kind of called this was emergent demographic shockwaves is people are astounded that everybody's getting old and people are astounded that they're getting old and people are astounded that their organization is getting old as well. So I'd reflect is when you go back, have a look around and just to see to a certain degree, is there parts of your organization that you're not utilizing? Has your training, is it coped to across the uh, broad spectrum of the organization? I get actually asked to speak an awful lot in Asia and um, outside Europe uh, where the population trends, um, they've identified them more fluidly. Um, I think I've, I've been speaking about this for the last five years. I haven't really had an awful lot of interest or attraction around this, but it's, it's great to see that I think the, the demographic um, five generation management of employees is becoming more. Um, it, it does strike me more in relation to diversity inclusion that um, the senior are age, the age profile across all bands from the 18 year old to the 80 year old uh, is not protected and sanctified. Some of the media I see um, castigating both older workers and younger workers, I think it's quite shocking. If that was brought into a racism sense, um, racism sense, it wouldn't be allowed. But people think it's easy to stereotype generations, rightly or wrongly. Thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.